Hi, everybody. Bones and I are back again. Today we get to talk about the moisture in the air. Okay, so in our last lesson, we talked about the different factors that affect the temperature in the air. Today we're going to talk about the moisture in the air or the amount of water that exists in the air and how it changes and, and how you measure it. Okay, um, so moisture exists in three different ways in the atmosphere around us. It comes as solids, liquids, and gases. Those are your normal three states of matter. So the water in the air, when it's a solid, can be ice, when we have ice storms. It could be snow, when we have snowstorms, hail, sleet, and frost, okay? Um, so those are, those are the forms of solids that we see in the air, in our atmosphere. Liquids, all right, can be water droplets, like rain, okay, dew, or, or fog, okay? Dew is the little bit of, of rain or, or water that you see on, on, on windshields in the morning or on your grass when your grass is wet in the morning. And then fog um, is like a low-flying cloud. Uh, I, now, gases are invisible water vapor. This is what's known as humidity. So, so moisture or water comes in all different forms, solids, liquids, and gases in the atmosphere when we go outside, and that affects the weather outside, all right? Um, now, a lot of people ask, how do clouds form, okay? So th this is a great question. I, I love answering this question because cloud, clouds are pretty interesting. I, I like clouds, okay? Do you like clouds, Bones? You like clouds? You like looking at clouds? You find shapes and animals in the clouds. I used to do that. You just lay there, look at the clouds. Oh, there's, there's Mickey Mouse in that cloud. Oh, there's an alligator in that cloud, okay? So now, how do the clouds get there, all right? What happens in the formation of clouds is that um, solids and, and liquid water help form clouds and ice crystals and water droplets help form clouds. So what happens is water evaporates from our oceans and our lakes and, and the water goes up into the air, okay? And as it goes up into the air, okay, the water is a gas. And the higher up in elevation it goes, it gets colder up there, remember. We learned this. The farther away we go from the Earth in the troposphere, it gets colder. So what happens to water vapor when it starts to cool off? Do you remember, Bones? What happens to the water when it starts to cool? Okay. That's right. It, it becomes water liquid. So what happens is the water vapor is rising up into the air, and it gets colder, and this water starts to turn into liquid water. But before it falls, what it does is it attaches itself to different aerosols in the air. And if you remember what an aerosol is, aerosol is just like dust in the air. So what happens is the water droplets start to attach to the dust that's located in our air and the water clumps together and forms clouds. Now, clouds get heavier and heavier and heavier. And I like to think of a cloud as a sponge, okay? You take a, take a dry sponge and you start putting water in it. It's gonna hold the water. The sponge is like the aerosols or the dust in the air and the water that you're adding to the sponge is the water vapor and the water droplets that are starting to condense and form uh, or what the, the sponge is holding. Eventually, the sponge becomes really heavy and it can't absorb any more water. So what starts happening to the sponge? It starts to leak, right? Okay, so when a cloud cannot hold the weight of the water that is on it anymore, it starts to rain. So think of clouds as a big sponge. The sponge will collect water and collect water and collect water until it is absolutely saturated and it is so heavy, it can't hold the water up in the air anymore. And then the cloud squeezes, okay? Just like squeezing a sponge and all the water drips out of it and the water comes back to the earth as rain. So uh, precipitation happens when, when the, the, the force of gravity is so great and the water droplets have become so big and so heavy that they just can't be suspended in air anymore and it comes back down to the earth as rain or snow or hail or sleet, okay? Now, this moisture that goes up into the air comes from two places, evaporation and transpiration. So evaporation happens when the water on the earth's surface in oceans, lakes, rivers, puddles on the sidewalk, okay? When it warms up enough that the liquid turns into water vapor and it goes up into the air. And it, like I said before, it gets high enough, it gets cold, and then it comes back into liquid water form. Transpiration is the water vapor given off by plants. Okay, plants give off water too. They, have, they go through photosynthesis, remember they have pores, they drink water from the roots. Okay, the roots go up, the water goes up 
through the stem into the leaves, and then it goes out of the leaves uh, through the pores in the leaves. So water goes and moisture goes into the air in those two different ways. All right. So um, here's some different types of clouds Oops. that tell you what kind of different weather it's going to be. So these are cirrus clouds. These, when you see these clouds, remember this is water being trapped up in the sky by dust. If you see these kinds of clouds, you really have no threat of rain. It, it's a nice day. They're kind of wispy. Um, you're not in the threat of any kind of rain. These are cumulus clouds. They're kind of puffy clouds. These are the ones where you see lots of different shapes and animals and you can play games with. Um, not really a chance of rain. Nice day. Um, they're, holding, they're holding the amount of water in, in the cloud fine. Remember, that's water right there attached to dust in the atmosphere. Okay, so those are cumulus clouds. That's what they look like. Um, they're the pretty ones. I like those. Stratus clouds. Okay, now it, it looks like it's going to be stormy, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Bones? That, that looks kind of stormy. Okay, stratus clouds, all right, they're holding a lot more water and it's, a, and it's a lot more prevalent and there is a very likely chance that it's going to rain very soon. And then you have the big scary ones, the cumulonimbus clouds, okay? It's fun to say, cumulonimbus. Can you say cumulonimbus bones? Huh? He can't say. He doesn't have vocal cords anymore. He can't say cumulonimbus. Okay, but I knew what you were thinking, all right? Um, so... So these are the four different types of clouds, all right? You can see cirrus clouds, you're going to have nice weather. Cumulus clouds, you're going to have a nice weather. Stratus clouds, probably going to rain. Cumulonimbus, find shelter. I hope you have a raincoat. All right, so um, again, clouds form when moisture, water vapor, goes up into the air, goes up into the atmosphere, it cools, it starts to turn into water liquid, and it attaches to the dust or aerosols in the air, okay? And just like a sponge, when that dust can't hold any more water, okay, the 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 rain will the the water will start to come back down to the earth in rain snow sleet just like a sponge being squeezed out because it's too saturated now as water is being evaporated into the air okay or transpired into the air from plants we have something called humidity humidity is when it gets sticky outside okay all right we've all felt this in the summer we've gone outside and it feels like you walk into soup that's just because there's a lot of water vapor in the air, okay, in your area, all right? Your, the air can only hold so much water vapor, okay? When, water, when there's more water vapor in the air, it pushes the air out, outside, and you get a lot of water and stickiness, and you just have a film on your skin, okay? And you just can't get cool. You need air conditioning. So that's what humidity is. Humidity is the amount of moisture in your area at any one time, okay? Um, now... We also have something called a dew point, all right? The dew point is the temperature at which condensation takes place, at which clouds form, all right? Um, so when you take a look at what the humidity is outside, all right, and you compare that to what the temperature is outside, you get something called a dew point, okay? So when the humidity reaches the dew point, clouds form. That's what happens, clouds form. Okay. Now, we measure this using something called a psychrometer. This is what a psychrometer looks like and a chart. A psychrometer is two different thermometers. It's got a dry bulb and a wet bulb. Okay. So these are bulbs down here, these little red things. Okay. Those are the bulbs, and as it gets warmer, the temperature in the bulb or the, the liquid in the bulb expands and it goes up, and it tells you what the temperature is like. Well, on one of these thermometers, they wrap a little wet cloth around it, okay? and one of them they leave dry. So we have a dry bulb and a wet bulb. And what you do is you just spin it. It's on a stick. And you actually just kind of spin the two thermometers at the same time. Okay. What that's going to do is the wet bulb is the water on the wet bulb is going to evaporate, causing a cooler temperature reading. While the dry bulb is going to stay more regular of what the temperature is outside. So you read these two temperatures after spinning the psychrometer. Psychrometer. Okay. Remember that. Psychrometer helps measure humidity. All right. You're going to need to know that later. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Psychrometer helps measure humidity, and then you take a look at this chart, okay? So what we do here is we take our wet bulb temperature and our dry bulb temperature. So we take the two temperatures on the two thermometers, and we subtract them, okay? And we compare it to the dry bulb temperature, and we just look on this chart to see what our relative humidity is. So if the difference between our wet bulb and dry bulb, okay, is 7, and the dry bulb temperature is six, 
we know the humidity is about 10%. That's a pretty low humidity. Chances are it's not going to rain. It's going to be a nice day outside. Low humidity, nice temperature, beautiful day to go outside and have a picnic. Okay? So the humidity outside is the amount of moisture in the air, and the amount of moisture in the air gets there by evaporation and transpiration, and that can change on an everyday basis depending on what the temperature is. We measure this using a psychrometer. Okay? I don't like when it's very humid out to you. It's all sticky and gross, and you just need to get into some air conditioning. So that's what humidity is. Enjoy.